So we got a, a problem from uh, Mohan. Uh, how do we troubleshoot uh, uh, timeout issues in, in PI? Uh, on which side do you have the timeout issues? I guess is the, the, the big question. Because there's, uh, um, there's uh, the, the part where you're calling a, a backend functionality. Um, for instance, the ECC system with a proxy on RFC and, and it times out uh, because yeah, it, it, it takes too long to get data or the, the, the update you want to do is, is too difficult or something like that. So there's some, some challenges uh, with, with that part and I think that would be where... So I think in the, the FTP... Uh, let me see here. So if you have a sender FTP, uh, sender SOAP, I guess would probably be the relevant one. Uh, if it's best effort. Read timeout. Uh, so this one is rather new or updated maybe. So here you can specify this uh, timeout properties. Um, so you can see the the note here. I'll just put the note here. So here you can see if it's SOAP, you can specify this timeout parameter on uh, receiver sender adapter. So both if if they're coming in from from one of these places, you'd be able to specify this uh, this timeout parameter, um, increase it, and figure out how much should it be um, and I think there may be another parameter somewhere that that says uh, if you have this uh, sync timeout doesn't work on so soap uh, sender adapter uh, fine-tune PUI on a under heavy load so I think there's quite a good uh, links for 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 dealing with with the soap uh, synchronous uh, timeout um, could you put uh, a little more comments about what, where you're seeing the, the bottleneck uh, in this Mohan? Otherwise, uh, I guess uh, a good place would obviously be the... Um, the communication channel monitoring here, you'd be able to see... Uh, okay, so you want to see how... PI is spending time. There is the performance monitor. Um, in this, you can see um, some of your different scenario, what is being used. Um, so let's see if we can see any of these. Um, so here you can see. Um, in this period of call, if we have this uh, this this method or this scenario, how long time did we spend in in each of these uh, different steps that this we have? Let's see if we have a synchronous one uh, today. Uh, just do a synchronous message. I guess maybe it will take a little time before it is uh, up and running and it has uh, saved all the data that it needs. For this one we have a synchronous scenario here. And we'll just run any of these, run test. So we should run three messages through um take a little while hope not too much is is going on in the system Let's see the details if we got the messages processed testing results unfinished results so we got I think it should be okay. I think there was maybe a bug here we need uh, we were fixing that it was not updating this one except in a batch job. 
Um, but let's see if we got anything last 15 minutes. Okay, so I guess we need to, to wait <laughs> until the end of the hour uh, to see these things. But at least here you'll be able to see if you have any message mapping that's taking time. Uh, I think we could also go here and see in, in the mapping. Uh, so we can see here the message mapping this. Um, and then we can drill down. We can see the message log here. And then you can go through these and see are there any of these steps that takes a long time um, for them to be processed. Um, so you can just time compare all of these times and see, okay, we got a step here. Um, let's see if we got anything. So it's calling the, the mapping that's taking a one millisecond and then it's it's back a little later two milliseconds then put message into the queue and then it returns the the response here so you can see the full full end-to-end -end, uh, processing uh, in in here about what it is and if you want on the overview the the performance monitor is the better place so the proxy is getting called by the e-commerce application and gets time up. So want to understand if the, the PI or in ECC. Um, yeah, so, so go through this one and see if there's any steps or how far it is in the process. Um, depending on how you're calling the, the backend, you may be able to change the, the timeout parameter that we looked at just before and, and figure out if, if you can increase the timeout. Uh, my guess is that the timeout parameter is or timeout happens in the ECC backend uh, because that's where it usually happens. Unless you have a really complicated large mapping on a large document, there shouldn't be any challenges getting the messages through the PI being processed and everything like that. So it will be a lot easier for to see what's happening in, in the ECC system. You may do uh, monitoring of that RFC and, and see, so you would, uh, I don't know what if it's a RFC, a proxy, or SOAP, uh, it's trying to, to use there. If, if it's RFC, I would just log on uh, and, and verify in the backend if, uh, if the RFC from PI user is taking a lot of resources, what it's looking at, and if you can see it's, it's there then you know okay that's probably in in the back end that something is happening and have a performance expert have a look at what this rfc you have created does if it's soap uh sorry proxy i guess you would be able to do it the same way see at, at least there you'd be able to see the message in in pi or in in the sx mb underscore uh, monitor and see um, money sorry and see what's going on what are the what are the what are the bottlenecks? Um, how we can how these can be improved, um, and you'd also be able to see the trace information. Um, it could also be because you're on a test system or a development system that doesn't have the the performance of this. But I haven't seen any time where the PI is the performance uh, bottleneck of this. The PI may take for a normal synchronous response less than uh, a second, maybe two, but not more than that, uh, unless you have a really crappy mapping, a lot of data into it, uh, something like that. So one thing on performance, um, so if you have a Java mapping or a user-defined function that gets data from a third-party library, um, and you have a lot of uh, dependent software components, then the performance may not be as good as you want it to. So I had one customer, one of a friend that was doing some some tests. They had done a migration from, I don't know, whatever, uh, to a newer system, 7.5 system. Um, and there, because they had a lot of dependent objects on that specific one they were using, 
there was a lot of load time for getting all of the the, the class files from from the jars in, internally, and that obviously caused this mapping. I think it it took a couple of minutes, if not more, five minutes time, which is ridiculous. Uh, for just loading a couple of libraries and I got other another friend that also had some some challenges where they were doing um, migration or also had a lot of dependent objects and it was just also taking a lot of time uh, to do.